The work of medical anthropologists and historians of medicine has always been really inspirational to me. Looking at how other cultures or other moments of history think about health and disease is interesting in itself, but it also helps us recognize things about our own medical systems that may be so normalized that we can't easily see them without looking really closely. Arthur Kleinman, an anthropologist who's also a physician and who's worked in China for decades, is someone whose work I've often drawn upon and felt inspired by. He writes about cross-cultural medical systems in ways that reveal a lot about what we call biomedicine, which is sometimes called Western medicine, which is the most dominant institutional and professional medical system in Europe and North America, but increasingly also in other parts of the world. Some of Professor Kleinman's influential and early work asked what kinds of practices and ideas are especially characteristic of biomedicine or Western, Western medicine, but I'll just keep calling it biomedicine from now on. One interesting idea he's written about is that a lot of what's specific to biomedicine might have to do with the fact that it arose in cultures where monotheism dominates. That is, cultures where the primary religious tradition is monotheistic, meaning that there's only one god, like Christianity, as opposed to traditions that have many gods, like Buddhism or Hinduism, for example. Kleinman says that a culture accustomed to a single authority of only one god might also have a similarly unitary sensibility about other kinds of truth, like the truths of medicine or science. Because Kleinman has done a lot of his research in China, he has a lot to offer us about how biomedicine might compare to Asian medical systems. He writes about the special approach of biomedicine, which as he puts it is a method of controlling existing data within its theory and the resulting predictions and determinations based on past facts. He says that given that approach, many aspects of Asian medical systems will look like they're not methodologically rigorous, and also that empirical testing might not make sense for them. So it's an issue of these two systems with really different methods, both potentially having lots of efficacy, but just not being measurable in the same way, right? Biomedicine, for example, Kleinman explains, is strongly and centrally materialistic in a way that other medical systems may be less so. Nature, in biomedical thinking, is centrally physical in a way that makes less sense in other systems that put subtle energies like chi or prana at the center of how they understand the body or the natural environment. A lot of Kleinman's research has focused on this issue of what he calls biomedicine's curious anti-vitalism. Ayurvedic medicine, Chinese or Tibetan medicine, and many other systems in the world understand there to be this energy or life force that animates our bodies. And ancient Greek medicine had this view too, but it was lost in the development of biomedical systems that we know now. So it's not only just kind of interesting to see this anti-vitalism, to take note of these differences, but we could also wonder what kind of effect do these theoretical or ideological differences have on the ground with real patients? One thing that Professor Kleinman and many other medical anthropologists have been really good at exploring is exactly that question. So for example, Kleinman says that the radically reductionistic and positivistic value orientation of biomedicine is ultimately dehumanizing for patients. His research has pointed out how the patient's own personal experiences of illness are neglected often in this model, and that the moral, social, and psychological aspects of human suffering have no place in this kind of medical system. He puts it really well in a quote that I'll kind of paraphrase or summarize. He says that through its insistence on the primacy of definitive materialistic dichotomies, like between body and mind or spirit, between functional and real diseases, and highly valued uh, therapeutic effects versus placebo effects, biomedicine presses the physician to construct these diseases as its object of study and treatment. And there's no place in this narrowly focused therapeutic vision for the patient's experience of suffering. The physician's, the physician's task, he says, wherever possible, is to replace those personal observations with objective data. 
Now I know that there are plenty of great physicians out there who do really who you really do care about the patient's experience of suffering, and this type of research shouldn't be understood as an attack on individual doctors. But it's an interesting analysis based on extensive, like years, decades of anthropological research with an eye to some very important cross-cultural comparisons of how a system works. And it gives us a lot to think about, I think. Kleiman's research suggests that in general, biomedical physicians are not, under, not taught to understand the sick person's experience and, and are taught to consider it discreditable because the system itself is dehumanizing. And the experience of suffering then is further medicalized for many patients as psychiatric conditions, which Kleiman, Kleiman calls a transformation of a moral issue into a technical one. Also, the strong individualism that characterizes many Euro-North American cultures, given that strong individualism, biomedicine is similarly kind of very focused on the individual person's sick body. And the community uh, relations and social embeddedness have no role in that system to play in illness or health. We can compare that to many other communities in the world where there are examples of how illness is part of kinship networks and how healing is the work of a whole community. So I'll just end here by saying that I really recommend that if some of these ideas seem interesting to you and maybe relevant to your own experience of illness or suffering, that the work of Arthur Kleinman, but also many, many other amazing medical anthropologists could be really important to your own work of trying to understand or make sense of life's inevitable experiences of suffering.